here is an application problem on rational functions. Now this is straight from the test paper and it is a practice test question for you. I'd like you to read the question, pause the video, solve and then look into my suggestions. The question is, over a distance of 120 km, the average speed of a car is 35 km per hour slower than that of a train and the train covers the same distance in 45 minutes less time. Find the speed of the car. So whenever you have a speed distance time question, it's a good idea to make a table and see how they are related. And from the table you can get your equations also. Now let's make a table here and see how they are related. So we can make three columns, one for distance, the other one for speed, and then for time, right? So, so these are our three columns. So we can write here distance. So we have distance, speed, and time, right? The units for distance will be kilometers, and for speed it will be kilometers per hour, and for time be hours, correct? Now, we are given two things here. One is we are talking about car and then we are talking about train. Now to fill in these values it's important to read the question once again. Over a distance of 120 kilometers average speed of car is 35 kilometers per hour slower than that of train. So that means if the speed of train is x then that of the car will be 35 less than x. So that is how you can fill up the twos. And then you're covering a distance of 120, right? So we can cover distance of 120 kilometers. Now it says slower than that of the train. And the train covers the same distance in 45 minutes less time. That means this time is less than that. And the difference is 45 minutes. Now, so the distance is 120 for both. So time taken is what? So we can make a distance speed time triangle, correct? So let's make one here. So this is our triangle for distance, speed and time. Now in this triangle, we can fill up the values. I hope you remember distance, speed and time. So what is time equals to? Time is ratio of distance with speed, right? So using this ratio, we can write down what is time. So time should be distance of 120 divided by the speed, right? So here distance is 120. We can write 120 divided by x minus 35. So that is the time taken by the car. Time taken by the train will be distance of 120 divided by x. Now it says 45 minutes less. The train is moving faster. It takes lesser time by 45 minutes. Now, we are talking about time in hours. So it's a good idea to convert 45 minutes to hours. So let's do that part also. We have 45 minutes. How will you convert that to hours? You know, in one hour, we have 60 minutes, right? So that is the conversion factor. So if you have this conversion factor, then you can cancel minutes minutes you get hours correct so you get time in hours 45 over 60 hours this could be simplified further so both you can divide by first you can divide by for example 5 and then by 3 so effectively by 15 so you get 3 over 4 so get time difference between the two is 3 over 4 so that is the difference in time so that gives us our equation so we get our equation as time taken by train and time taken by car. What is the difference between the two? It is 3 by 4 of an hour, right? Okay. So it says train covers the same distance 45 minutes less time. So this, so time taken by train is 120 divided by x. We'll write 120 divided by x is equal to time taken by car, which is 120 divided by x minus 35 and time taken by train is 45 minutes less or 3 by 4 of an hour less so minus 3 over 4 so this becomes our equation right so that is the equation which we need to solve to find the speed of the car remember one thing 
we have taken x as speed of the train not car so speed of the car will be x minus 35 so don't forget to deduct 35 from x and then write the answer for speed of the car normally uh, one should have uh, written variable for car so when you read a question like find the speed of the car you should define let the speed of the car be the variable right but well we went the other way so we'll follow that till the end now to solve these kinds of rational equations we should look first for the common factors so that we are working with smaller terms you can see here that both sides we could divide by 3 right so we can take common factor of 3 so we can first thing we can divide both by 3 so I'm writing times 3 right the whole equation everything so I'm multiplying this also and this also by 1 over 3 so that way we get slightly smaller values to work with so that's a good idea actually you should apply these methods so 120 divided by 3 gives you 40 got it 3 goes 4 times in 12 so you get 40 over x equals to this side also we will divide by 3 we get 40 over x minus 35 and here we get 1 over 4 so that's the first step now the second step to simplify our rational function is that we should get rid of fractions how to get rid of fraction that means we should multiply by a term which is the common denominator so the common denominator is x minus 35 times 4x so we'll multiply by this now both sides correct so we are doing 4x times x minus 35 right so I'm writing all this in light just to show you that these are the steps which I am following to simplify it, right? So when I do that, in the numerator, what do I get? I get 40 times x minus 35 times 4, right? So x and x cancel out. So these x's will cancel out, right? So let me do that. So I can do that at least on the left side. So these cancel out. And you get 4 times 4 is 160. So I get... 160 times x minus 35 this is your left side on the right side when I multiply this by the first term x minus 35 cancels so I get 40 times 4x which is 160x is that okay and for the next term 4 and 4 cancel out so I get x times so minus x times x minus 35 so this is how my rational function has been transformed into a linear thing, right? Which is a quadratic function now. So it's much simpler to solve, right? So we'll just expand all these terms and see what further simplifications can be done. So we'll multiply these. We get 160x minus 35 times 160. Let's use calculator, okay? So that gives us 35 times 160 equals to 5600 so we write 5600 here equals to 160x minus x square and that becomes plus 35x correct now as you can see 160x and 160x is common right so we can kind of get rid of that and now we'll get all the terms to the left side right so it's x square when i get here plus 35x becomes minus right minus 35x and we have minus 5600 equals to zero so what i did is i didn't write here 160x minus 160x because they become zero so it kind of cancelled them out right so we got our quadratic equation now in this equation uh, let's see if uh, 5600 can be divided by 35 so we can just try it out if not there is no harm in trying it, right? So when you try it out, you get 160. So, okay, so it does. So it, there is a factor. So we could actually factor it also at this time. But anyway, I'll prefer to use a quadratic formula to solve this equation. So we can now use quadratic formula. We say x equals to minus b. So it becomes 35 here. Plus minus square root of b square, which is minus 35 square, minus 4 times a is 1 times c which is minus 5600 square root divided by 2 times a that is 2 so that is the equation which you get at this stage 
rather that's the value of x which you get at this stage right now you can use your calculator and calculate this answer remember minus and minus will make it plus and this is also plus so you need to add all these terms within the square root right so we will do this calculation write it here so we I'll use a different ink so that it doesn't really get mixed up with what we have already written right so we can write x as equals to 35 plus and minus square root of so let me calculate this so within the square root we have 35 square so minus will become plus so I just wrote 35 square and plus since minus and minus is plus 4 times 5600 so we get 23625 so let me write 23625 for the time being square root divided by 2 right now as you can see this negative term will be make the whole thing negative but when we are talking about distance speed and time all are positive right so we'll use 35 plus square root whatever right so let me take square root of 23 625 we get 15 square root 105 which I'm converting to decimals which is 153.7 so we have here 35 plus minus 153.7 divided by 2 right now to solve this we'll just do addition of these two and divide by 2 so we'll add to this 35 which is equals to uh, something divided by 2 so we can write it in decimals 188.7 divided by 2 that gives us equals to 94.35 so we get one answer which is 94.35 we have ignored the negative answer since it is not valid for this situation correct? so we get x as 94.35 remember x is speed of the train in kilometers per hour so what is the speed of the car correct that is what you should remember so we get find the speed of the car so speed of the car will be how much speed of car will be 94.35 take away 35 okay that is what the speed of the car is that is the speed right so we'll take away 35 from here and write down the speed of the car as equals to 59.35 so we get our answer as 59.35 and therefore now you can write down your answer very clearly that is speed of the car is include units so answer is speed of the car is 59 point we can say 0.4 kilometers per hour correct so that becomes the speed of the car now it's a good idea to go through the steps which we have taken to solve this question. So step number one is represent your situation in some way. So for speed distance time I prefer the tabular. So make a table kind of thing as we have here. Now that put all the values which are known to us in the table and then we need to find an equation. Read your question properly and then from there itself you get your equation. For example here train covers the same distance in 45 minutes less time that's a critical statement so time taken by train is 120 by x which is 45 minutes or 3 over fourth of an hour less than time taken by the car solve the equation to get the answer and don't forget to write your answer with the units so that's how it should be solved thank you